The Dart team recently announced that Null Safety is now available as a tech preview, and the introduction of Null Safety in Dart 2.9 marks a major milestone for the language. Null Safety helps you avoid an entire class of problems and enables some performance improvements. So in this video we'll take a look at what's changed and learn how to use the new Null Safety features by example. And by the way, if you want, you can read this as a written tutorial on my website at codewithandrea.com. And I had to admit that I'm super excited about Null Safety and I can't wait to tell you everything about it. And to do this, we'll use the new Dart pad with Null Safety, which you can find at nullsafety.dartpad.dev. By the way, once you open this, you'll find this drop down called Learn from Snippets. And I recommend that you take all these exercises to get familiar with the new syntax. In any case, we'll cover everything in detail in this video. As part of this, we will learn about the Dart type system, nullable and non-nullable types, the assertion operator, as well as the flow analysis features of the Dart compiler. We will see how to use non-nullable variables with classes, as well as non-nullable named and positional arguments. We will also cover the null aware cascade and subscript operators and learn about the late keyword and see what's changed with static and global variables. But before we get to that, we need a short history lesson. Null references were first introduced in 1965 in the Algol programming language, and since then they have been adopted by most mainstream programming languages, including the Dart language. However, since their introduction, they have been called the billion dollar mistake, and for good reason, because null errors have become incredibly common across a lot of the software that we use today. And since null errors are a big deal, let's see what's changed in Dart to address this. And before we cover null safety, let's talk about the Dart type system. Dart is said to have a sound type system. When we write Dart code, the type checker makes sure that we can't write something like this. In fact, this code produces an error telling us that a value of type string can't be assigned to a variable of type int. Along the same lines, when we write a function in Dart, we can specify a return type. Because of type safety, Dart can guarantee with 100% confidence that this function always returns an int. So type safety helps us write safer programs and more easily reason about the code. But type safety alone can't guarantee that a variable or return value is not null. As a result, I can write this code which is valid but generates an exception at runtime. In this example, it's easy enough to spot and fix the problem by passing a non null value. But in large code bases, it's hard to keep track of what can and cannot be null. Now, if we wanted, we could add a runtime assertion that helps us when we debug this code. And we could also throw an exception if the value is null. And this code would help us mitigate the problem, but it also adds more noise. So what we really want is to tell Dart that the value argument should never be null. A better solution is needed, and now we have it. Because Dart 2.9 introduces null safety as a language feature. The major change is that all types are now non-nullable by default. This means that this code doesn't compile and it generates an error telling us that a value of type no can't be assigned to a variable of type int. In fact, when you use non-nullable variables, you must follow one important rule, and that is that non-nullable variables must always be initialized with non-null values. And if you reason along these lines, it will be easier to understand all the new syntax changes. As we will see, the introduction of null safety and non-nullable types has some important advantages, because we can write null safe code with strong compile time guarantees, and this makes us productive, because Dart can tell us when we are doing something wrong. And we can more easily declare our intent. This leads to APIs that are self-documenting and easier to use. Finally, the Dart compiler can optimize our code, resulting in smaller and faster programs. So the most important concept of this video is that previously we could only catch null errors at runtime, but with null safety we can now detect them at compile time, and all the syntax changes that we are about to see are a direct consequence of this. So let's revisit our previous example and see how it works with null safety. This time, both the value argument and the return value are now guaranteed to be not null. As a result, runtime null checks are no longer necessary, and this code now produces a compile time error. But if all types are now non-nullable by default, 
how can we declare nullable variables? To do that, we need to add a question mark symbol after the type, like this. So in this case, I'm declaring a nullable string variable, and this is initialized to null by default. On the other hand, here is a nullable integer value, and this is initialized to a non-null value. And because it is nullable and non-final, I can still reassign it to null. And now that we know how to create nullable variables, we can use them anywhere we like. So here are a few examples of how we might use them. Here I have an open socket method which takes a nullable port number. And here I have a method to extract the last name from a full name. So this takes a non-nullable full name argument and uses the split method to get all the components and it can only return the last name if there is more than one component, otherwise it returns null. And just to show you how this works, here I can add a couple of print statements calling this method and if I run this code, I can see that in the first case I get a null value and in the second case I get my last name. And here is another example showing how to use non-nullable values with generics. So the takeaway here is that you can declare nullable variables anywhere in your code with the question mark syntax. Nullable variables are a good way of expressing the absence of a value, and this is useful in many APIs. So when you design an API, ask yourself if a variable should be nullable or not, and declare it accordingly. But there are cases where we know that something can't be null, but we can't prove it to the compiler. In these cases, the assertion operator can help. So let's look at the assertion operator with some examples. So here is a nullable variable that is assigned with a non-null value. And here we assign this to a non-nullable variable using an exclamation mark, which is also known as the assertion operator. Once again, we can use this to promote a nullable variable to a non-nullable variable. By doing this, we are telling Dart that the value is not null and it is safe to assign it to a non-nullable variable. However, we need to be careful because applying the assertion operator to a null value will throw a runtime exception. So the takeaway here is that when your assumptions are wrong, the assertion operator leads to runtime exceptions. And sometimes we need to work with APIs that return nullable values. The last name function that we created before is a good example of this. Here, the type system can't help. And if we know that the function will return a non-null value for a given argument, we should assign it to a non-nullable variable as soon as possible. And this is done with the assertion operator. So we should always prefer this syntax to this one, because in the second case, we end up with a nullable variable, even though we know that the return value is not null. In summary, try to create non-nullable variables when possible, as this will be guaranteed to be not null at compile time. And if you know that a nullable expression won't be null, you can assign it to a non-nullable variable with the assertion operator. Next, let's look at flow analysis, which is a feature that makes your life easier by taking into account null checks on nullable variables. To see what that means, let's look at this example. In this case, we have a method to calculate the absolute value, and this takes a nullable value argument. Because of this, we can't call value.abs directly, and in fact, we get an error telling us that an expression whose value can be null must be null checked before it can be dereferenced. And there are two ways that we can null check this variable. The first one is to use the conditional access operator so that this entire expression returns null if the value is null. As a result, this entire expression becomes nullable, but the compiler is still not happy because the return type of the function is non-nullable. And to fix this, we can use the if null operator and return zero if this expression is null. And just to be clear, this syntax was already available in Dart 2.8. But with Dart 2.9, we have another way of doing this. So let me restore the original code. And here I'm going to add an explicit null check. So here we use an if statement to return early if the value argument is null. And beyond this point, value cannot be null and is treated or promoted to a non-nullable value. Hence, we can safely use value.abs and there is no need to add a question mark here to use conditional access. In fact, Dart is smart enough to tell us that the target expression can't be null, so the null aware operator can't be used. 
By the way, if we wanted, we could modify this code and throw an exception if the value is null. And once again, because of the null check, value is still promoted to a non-nullable value and the null aware operator is not needed. In summary, you can use upfront null checks to return early or throw exceptions. And after a nullable variable has been null checked, Dart lets you use it as a non-nullable variable, which is quite nice. Next. Let's look at another interesting aspect of flow analysis, which is called definite assignment. Dart knows where variables are assigned and where they are read. So this example shows how to initialize a non-nullable variable after checking for a condition. And as long as a non-nullable variable is given a value before it is used, then Dart is happy. As a proof of that, here I could add a print statement. But as we can see, this syntax is not valid because result is not yet assigned. On the other hand, if we add a print statement here, then this code is fine. In summary, flow analysis makes your life easier because you can use null checks for nullable variables and late initialization for non-nullable variables. Next, let's talk about using non-nullable variables with classes. Instance variables in classes must be initialized if they are non-nullable. This means that I can write code like this, but not like this. And if a non-nullable instance variable can't be initialized with a default value, we must set it with a constructor. And another area of Dart where things change is when we use named arguments. With null safety, it's not possible to declare named non-nullable arguments. This applies to regular methods, meaning that we can't write this. In fact, the compiler tells us that the parameter value can't have a value of null because of its type and no null no, null no default value is provided. And the same applies to class constructors as well, because in both cases we are trying to use an optional named argument to initialize a non nullable variable. Instead, we should mark these arguments with the new required modifier, which replaces the old at required annotation. So here are a few examples showing you what you can and cannot do with this method. You can't call print abs like this because the value argument is required. And also you can't provide the argument but give it a value of null. Instead, you can only provide a non-null value. And the same reasoning applies when creating instances of the host class. So as long as a non-nullable variable is initialized with a non-null value, Dart is happy, and if you use named parameters, you can accomplish this with the required argument or a default value, like this. And the same concept applies to positional parameters as well, so here is another variant of the same class constructor. And if we declare things this way, then the only correct way of creating an instance of this class is to provide a non-null argument. And once again, because this variable is non-nullable, we can't make this positional argument optional. That is, unless we add a default value or we mark the instance variable as nullable. So between nullable and non-nullable variables, named and positional arguments, required and default values, things can get quite confusing. But as long as you remember the golden rule, things will make sense. So spend some time getting familiar with all the new syntax rules and the Dartpad sample snippets are a good way of doing this. And Dart will tell you if you're doing something wrong, so read the error logs carefully. Next, I want to talk about the null aware cascade operator. The cascade operator is normally used when we want to call a sequence of methods on a class instance. For example, here we have a dummy implementation of a path class that you may use to draw something on the canvas. And once you have a path object, you can call all these methods with the cascade operator if you want your code to be more concise. However, how can you use the cascade operator if you have a nullable variable? To deal with null safety, the cascade operator now gains a new null aware variant, which looks like this. And all these cascade operations will only be executed if path is not null. And because the null aware cascade operator can short circuit, then this null aware variant is only needed at the beginning of the sequence. Next, let's talk about the null aware subscript operator. Up until now, checking if a collection was null before using the subscript operator was quite verbose. Luckily, Dart 2.9 introduces the null aware subscript operator, which makes this a lot easier. Next, let's talk about the late keyword. 
You can use the late keyword to initialize a variable when it is first read rather than when it's created. A good use case for this is when initializing variables in init state. As you can see, when we declare a final non-nullable variable like this, we get an error telling us that the final variable text editing controller must be initialized. To fix this, we can use the late keyword, which makes the error go away. Not just that, but the late keyword makes the init state method completely redundant in this case. In fact, we can replace this entire code with just one line. And with this setup, the text editing controller will be initialized late when it is used in the build method. So it's common to use late in combination with final to defer the creation of read-only variables. So where else should we use late? A good place for this is when creating variables whose initializer does some heavy work, like in this case. Also, we can declare a late final variable inside a function body and then we can initialize it like this. But because this variable is final, we cannot assign it one more time. And in fact, this will give us an error telling us that the late final local variable is already definitely assigned. In any case, I don't recommend using late variables this way because this style can result in non-obvious runtime errors. So here is an example when things can go wrong. In this case, I create a class with a late final instance variable and set it with this method. And when I try to use it, I can write code like this. Now, this code is valid because the variable is late, but if I run this code, I get a runtime exception telling me that the field x has already been initialized. In summary, by declaring a non-nullable late variable, we promise that it will be non-null at runtime and Dart helps us with some compile time guarantees. But I recommend to only use late sparingly and to always initialize late variables when they are declared. Finally, I want to quickly talk about what's changed with static and global variables with no safety. All global variables must now be initialized when they are declared, unless they use the late keyword. And the same applies to static class variables. But as I said before, I do not recommend using late this way as it can lead to runtime errors. So if you need static or global variables, it's much safer to initialize them when you declare them. Okay, so we reached the end of this tutorial. As we have seen, no safety is a major change for the Dart language and it has been introduced to help you write better and safer code. But at the end of the day, no safety is just a tool and it is your job to use it correctly. So every time you declare a variable in Dart, think about whether it should be nullable or not. This may seem like extra work, but it will lead to better code and Dart can help you along the way. And as of June 2020, null safety is in tech preview and is not intended to be used in production code. Full null safety as a stable feature is planned before the end of the year and you can check this page to get the latest updates on this feature. And if you can't wait, you can port existing Flutter projects to null safety and automate this process with this migration tool. Thank you very much for watching. If this video has helped you, please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.